play with you on a Tuesday afternoon in the Music City. What's happening, people? Those Monday night games were good, man. No, nah, that wasn't good football right there. Well, I mean, I should say, I mean, Buffalo waxed Jacksonville, but yeah. it was fun watching that Buffalo. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> that's, 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 that's what we had. And, you know, if you're a Titans fan, you enjoy seeing Jacksonville lose by 37 yeah, points. Exactly. Uh, you want to talk some t- uh, Tennessee volunteer football? I Slay think dog? we need to. Former Vol uh, and NFL tight end Jacob Warren joins us now on 3HL. Jake, what's up, man? Yo, yo, how we doing, man? You good? Doing good. Still dude. buzzing off that Oklahoma win, man. Watching that defense not only uh, play well, but like how many times did we see Oklahoma players get up slowly? <laughs> man, it seems like that's all I've been talking about about this game, bro, is that defense and just yeah. how physical they were, man. I just everything, swarming to the ball, D line, you know what I mean, running downfield. And man, like you said, those guys getting up slow and peeling them off the ground is, is what you want to see, man. <laughs> so, uh, no, for sure, that's promising, dude. I, I think they, they did a really good job. You know, uh, uh, a lot of, like, national people were talking about, well, you know, Tennessee's offense and Heupel and all this stuff, and, like, you know, rightfully so, people think about Heupel and the offense, and and I get it. But uh, everybody was questioning the defense. We talked to Josh Heupel after, you know, talking to people around the program all summer, but talked to Josh Heupel at SEC Media Days, and and Don Davenport, who's not here today, Jacob, said, Coach, uh, how different is that defense now than when you got there? And he lowered his head, Jacob, and like took a deep breath and then raised up and said night and day. He said, and, "Let me tell you something." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, and, like I'm a I'm a big body language guy, and I, I read right there. I, like you don't even need to say anything. Like I know what you've got coming. Right. But that's been the right. difference, right? Like that that's what elevates a really good team into a national championship caliber team. No, one hundred percent, dude. People say all the time, man, is is defense wins championships, and and you know, obviously, it's all three phases: special teams, offense, defense. But man, when you got a defense that can go out there and and, and keep your team in a game, you know what I'm saying? Like if, if that's if that's different, right? Say the defense is isn't playing as good as they did, or or they're just not as good as they are. You know, that game easily, you know, with the offense, kind of, you know, I mean, they weren't stuttering, right? But just coming out a little bit, a little bit slow, they had to find their group a little bit. Mm-hmm. That game could have got out of hand quick, right? And that's a totally different game if you really, you really think about it. So the, the ability to be able to, you know, give your give your offense some time to, to settle in and give your your young quarterback some time to settle in, you know, that's going to be the key going through the stretch of these these SEC games that they got that they got coming up. Man, it's not an easy schedule, and it never is, and you don't want it to be, right? But um, man, if that defense can keep playing like that, they'll be they'll be just fine. Makes it a lot easier, man, when you're able to get out there and you don't have to um, huff and puff and look over your shoulder. You know the defense is going to give you back to get that high-powered offense going. Jacob, tell me this, man. What's the biggest difference that you see or maybe one of the tilting factors that you see Mm -hmm. between a 22-year and this year being compared a lot? Um, Outside of the defense, my bad. Outside of the defense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'll say this, man. I think... Both teams had had great players. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you have mm-hmm. had that team had a lot of guys that are in the NFL now, or, or you know, will be in the NFL soon, whatever. But um, I think the biggest thing, man, is just the time that that hype's been here and mm-hmm. the amount of, of, I guess, just experience that you know, not even every position has, but right. just the amount of experience that the coaches have. You know what I'm saying, and, and really finding their groove and, and knowing how to approach a full season, knowing what to expect when you get, you know, eight games in. Like, how do we keep our guys going? This is obviously, you know, if you want to talk about 2022, or whatever. Right. Um, end up slipping up a little bit towards the end of the season and, and knocking ourselves out of a playoff contention, and mm-hmm. you know, you still sit there and think about what could have been, whatever. But I think. Now, now this team is is prepared for stuff like that, and and you know that that testing point is going to come down the line, right? Or yeah. maybe it's already, you know, already happening, whatever. But uh, just experience, dude, and just kind of comfortability of knowing what you're getting yourself into, uh, coaching staff wise, player wise, you know, whatever it may be. We always get the opportunity to talk to, you know, some lime. And we had the opportunity to talk to you, the SEC Media Day. But you guys kind of work yeah. in unison, especially without having a fullback in that spot. How difficult is it, is it as far as not the, hurrying to the line or anything, but everybody being on the same page as far as you front guys? Um, You know, it's it's... I'll say it's it's not as if you've been in this game and you know the game and right. you study the game and you 
and you really put your time in, it, it's truly not as difficult just because everybody's on the same page, man. And that's the, we always, man, we had a motto, dude, like, and a lot of people say this, like, you, you know, if we're going to be on the wrong page, all of us got to be on the wrong page. At least we're on the same page. You know what I'm saying? So, so if we can all be on the same page, no matter what page we're on, man, like we're going to make it work. Yeah. And you might, you know, the play might not go for, you know, a touchdown or a first mm-hmm. down or whatever, but that's how you eliminate those, those big mistakes you see people make is, is when two people aren't on the same page, man, that that's when trouble happens. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, the coaches do a good job of making sure that the guys are prepared with film study and, and, Man, after after all that, the winter workouts and spring ball and yeah. summer workouts, <laughs> fall camp, like you know those guys at the back of your hand you're playing with. So you know when they're messed up and you know how to get them right. I think that was a big part of the offense for, for me as a tight end was just, you know, if I hear something wrong, if I hear a quarterback say something that might not make sense or I hear somebody making a wrong call or whatever, like it's on somebody else to point that out. And right. you got to just say, look, forget, like, you know what I mean? Like, don't take it personal that I'm trying to call you out, but I'm just trying to get everything right. And I think once that team got to that point, we had a lot of success and um, obviously they're, they're still having that success. So I think that's the, that's the biggest thing there. I think that's beautiful what you just said, because I think that's why, um, you know, all of us as parents want our kids to play sports, to, to learn those things, right? Like to be held accountable yeah, and, and to, uh, and, and it's not personal. It's just like, let's all get on the same page. Mm-hmm. Uh, former Vols uh, tight end Jacob Warren with us, VFL. Uh, let's talk about the tight end position uh, because, uh, you know, I read some things coming from the tight ends coach uh, saying like that this was the secret yeah. weapon. And then uh, against NC State, Kisselman stays in Davis, six receptions, 71 yards and two touchdowns. How impactful can this group be moving forward for this football team? You know, I think I think the tight end position and, and whether you see the big stats or not, I think the tight end position is is one of obviously you gotta kinda rule out the quarterback because that's the obvious most impactful player. But tight end, man, in my opinion, of course I play, I played tight end too, but yeah. Um it's the most important role, man. And it's it's um it's um sorry guys. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, it's the most important role, dude. Like this, they are the determiner of the tempo. They determine, you know, what I'm saying how fast everything goes, how slow everything goes. They determine, you know, what I mean, they they making things right here and there. And so, if you got smart guys in that room, you know, you can really, I guess, I don't even know how to how to explain it. You could you can really kind of fill some of the gaps, right? And you can you can allow your O line to make some mistakes here and there, and the tight ends be able to cover their back, or you can allow a wide receiver to, you know, maybe bust on a route and just rely on a smart guy inside that you know has a little bit of savvy to uh, to make them right or to to help them out to protect them, whatever it may be. So, um, yeah, having good guys that that know what they're doing, that are skilled enough to go make plays. Obviously, all three of those guys are super skilled and super talented. Um, you know, you have something like that. That's that's a weapon, and that, that that's awesome to have uh, in an offense like this for sure. How much do you think the uh, the communication in the helmet to to fifteen seconds on the play clock he- helps a team like Tennessee that is immediately on the ball? And I, Jacob, I've had coaches tell me that they've changed plays because the defense shows what they are while the communication is still going and they'll change a play from a hitch to a go, for example, and score a touchdown. Like how impactful do you think that is for a team like Tennessee that's on the ball so fast that the defense has to show what they are while Heupel's still talking to Nico? For sure. It's almost like not fair, right? (laughs) I think it's weird to think about and. And I was kind of wondering the same thing. How I was going to work in the college scene. Obviously, it's how they've been doing it in the NFL for years and years and years. But yeah. um, there's so many different styles of offense in college. And, you know, I think for us specifically, SAS is in Tennessee. Like, I think, you know, it's a major advantage, right? I think the, the ability to get on the ball with, you know, 20 something seconds left on the, on the, on the shot clock and, uh, be able to get a feel of what the defense is doing when you run in high tempo. The defense can really only do a certain number of things, right? I think that's something that we definitely figured out pretty early is that a lot of times d- defense's answer to our tempo is just to play base defense, man, get in a, you know, a two high shell or get in a one high shell if they want to play man and, and kind of just roll with the punches and just hope that they can, they can keep up and, um, yeah, dude, you, you catch some defenses and some bad looks and bad spots and, Hype is so – man, I, I wish so many people – I don't know if people see it, but I wish people could just watch how he operates on the sideline, watch how Joey Halsley operates in the box. Like, 
these guys are dialed in and they're like truly trying to just pick these defenses apart. And so, yeah, they see something like that. They're like, hey, <laughs> they're, they're able to at 19 seconds to tell Nico, hey, man, you know, check your slot here. Or check your <laughs> yeah. check your one here. And like he's probably going to have the right coverage. Like that's that's crucial. And that's awesome for a young quarterback that, you know, is looking to just get experience and just get a few good games under his belt so he can really go out there and start maybe even making those calls himself. You know what I'm saying? And be able yeah. to see stuff like that himself. Former Vol tight end Jacob Warren crushing it, uh, doing a lot of media these days, and uh, uh, we're, we're loving him hopping on with us. By the way, you can watch the show live, YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Thank you, Zeph. Ramon Foster in the chat said, uh, hey. y'all got a solid guest on. <laughs> That's hey, all Mo. you can come with, Mo. Come on, man. <laughs> hey. What up, Mo? What up, Mo? Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, Jacob. All right, man. It's time to have a little fun, man. Kick your feet up one time, man. You got to go in the boom, boom room since you came on the show. You. Ooh, this is the first boom, boom room in a while. Yeah, it is, all right. man. It all is. Right, let's go. So let me go on and run it down for you, Jacob, man. Once, right. and when you walk into the boom, boom room, the door's locked behind you. Now, Okay. And you got to answer everything truthfully to the best of your ability. That's the only way the door is unlocked. If you don't, then you get locked away in the, in, in, in the basement with the lost souls and you only get two meals in a cot. That's it. Right. Now, how, now, how you going to know if I lie, though? Oh, I, I, I'm the judge, jury, and the executioner on this yeah. one, brother. You yeah. might be telling the truth, but you he thinks you're lying. lying. So I think you lying, and you <laughs> stuck, brother. <laughs> too hot to the cot, huh? Right. Jacob, you, do, you, do you agree to these terms? Okay, I agree to these terms, man. Let's roll. Lock the door, Zelf. <laughs> Real quick, Mo fired back. Tell them I can't give them too much credit. They're an extension of the offensive line. No one gives us too much credit. <laughs> no. But Jacob is dope. Go Vols. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Jacob. Here we go, man. First and foremost, give me a time that you, if you could rewind the clock. In yeah. your time in Tennessee, that you want to go back to that game, you need to experience that one more time. Uh man. So I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I'm not that I want to experience this one more time, man. I want to change the outcome, of something, man. If we go back to Ole Miss, okay, 2021. Oh, um, you know what I'm saying? That I was game, there. I think really, really changed me a lot, dude. Because it was on, like, it wasn't on me, right? We didn't lose a game because of me, right? And I'm not gonna say that. You know, games are lost. No one knows when games are lost, right? But mm -hmm. There was an opportunity for me to make a play and an opportunity for me to uh, extend a drive. And, you know, whether I was short, whether I wasn't short, the ref said I was short. Mm. You know what I mean, and that was that was something that really stuck with me for a while, man. I think as, as a player, you go through trials, man, even in basketball, you know, yeah. your shots, Ryan, you, you know, you wish you, you had back, whatever. So, um that's one, man. I'd go back to that. We can move on. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about, we'll talk about it, but, uh, yeah. No doubt, man. No game's ever lost on one yeah, play. Yeah, no. On, man, man right. that ref, ref was blind on that one, man. It was trying to get out of there. But that's neither here nor there. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. I, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacob, give me now this, man. Did you ever think that the atmosphere would be like it is when you first walk and step foot into Tennessee? Yeah, man. So, so I feel like you might kind of know my story a little bit. A lot of mm -hmm. people kind of know my story. Um, I grew up in Knoxville. Yep. Um, my dad played ball at Tennessee back in mm -hmm. back in the you know late eighties, early nineties, and so we spent a lot of time, you know, what I mean, just up at at the stadium, just at games, and and you know, on the sideline with a little VFL pass and everything like that. And so, uh, just being around, man, being around the culture, being around the atmosphere, being around the stadium, um, I kind of knew what to expect, but. You know, very early on in my career, when I wasn't playing, you know, what I mean, I, I would sit there and I would just kind of sit back and look like, man, like, I'm, I'm gonna light this place up one day, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's gonna be me causing these these screams and these roars and these yeah. cheers, like, and that that thing is that's really what motivated me, dude, is, is walking by the stadium every single day, going to class, like, yeah, it's gonna be my time. Like, once I get there, I'm gonna really appreciate it. So, I never took it for granted, dude. I, I, I 100%. <clears throat> enjoyed every moment, you know, every time that that stadium would just be rocking, like defense out there on third down, whatever. Like, I just sit back and, man, I just appreciate it as somebody that, that was, you know, understanding that it would come to an end one point. And, and yeah. I just, I think that motivated me, man, to go out there and, and just give it my all every play, dude. Like, you know, what I will say is it's crazy when you're out there, though, like, you don't see nobody. You don't hear nobody. Yeah. You don't feel the crowd. You don't, like, at least on offense, like, I'm out there, like, you're so locked in and, and it was it was the craziest experience to me to to really feel like you know I was able to just eliminate 
all surroundings, man. And that's what that's what that game does for me, dude. And that's why I love it and I appreciate it so much. That's why I go so hard. It's just that game is able to do things for me, you know, mentally, emotionally, yeah. physically, all that stuff that I, will, I don't get nowhere else. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it's a blessing, dude. And it, it was awesome to be there. And couldn't be more proud to, to wear the orange, man. Like love forever. that. Yeah. yeah. Love, you, you always hear about the culture and how it bleeds into each program. Yeah. Um, take me away from the game of football, whether it be in the locker room, film room, dorm, going to class, sure. whatever it may be. Can you, you I can I can definitely place where the turning point was for our basketball team when I was in school. Can you place yeah. your finger on when you saw um it start to turn and like, okay, this is the culture that I was used to, I grew up watching, this is what I want to be a part of. Can you put your finger yeah. on that away from the field? Uh, not allowed to lie. Okay. No, you know, say, <laughs> oh, you know, you can, you um, just ain't never getting out. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, no, man, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not into comparisons. I'm not into, mm -hmm. you know, judgment. I'm not into none of that. But no question. the second, the second that hype walked in the building, dude, like the first press conference that he had, we all knew like, yeah, dude, we're, we're in good hands, bro. Like, <sighs> He, he came in, he cared for us, he loved on us, but he, he, he showed us how to work, he showed us how to be accountable to each other, he taught me how to be a leader, dude. Like, you know, the programs and stuff that we would bring in to just help guys develop and help yeah. guys understand kind of, you know, how to handle their mental health, how to handle, how to handle you know, social situations, mm -hmm. how to handle, you know, females and the opposite gender and, right. and uh, just the approach he took to, to developing, you know, young men as, as well as really good football players. Uh, as a guy that was kind of in the middle of my career and, and it had been three years that I'd been at the school mm -hmm. and, and I was obviously starting to think like, man, I, I want, I want success. Like I right. want, you know, not even the attention, but I just, I just want to, to see the fruit of my labor and right. I want to be able to experience, you know, uh, just again, just success. Right. And, and second he got here, man, my life just, everything started I started being successful, mm -hmm. right? I started being successful on the field. I think I was pretty much always successful in the classroom, if yeah. I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> that was never really an issue for me, but like, I just, everything in my life started just going the right direction, it felt like. And, and um, yeah, man, truly, like, not even on no, like, sentimental, sappy, right. anything. Like, it, it changed my life and, and it changed my career. And um, I would say that that was the turning point, man. 2021, early on in that year was was when everything kind of changed. That's real. Yeah. I've heard that from multiple players. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah, that's awesome. Let me let you out of the boom boom room on this one right here, Jacob, man. Give me mm -hmm. your insight to the ceiling of this team and why why will they reach it? You've been um, a part. You've been a part. You just talked about how it the, slipped up. They'll reach the playoffs. Okay. I'll tell you right now, they'll reach the playoffs. Okay. Um and then from there, it'll just be a matter of, of right place, right time, right. making mm -hmm. plays when we need to make plays, defense stepping up when they need to step up, Nico just being the guy he is. Um, but no, up. truly, like that that's where I think to see it. Not The ceiling is obviously if they're in the playoffs. No the question. No question. No, I think you know that's I mean? fair so, because so. once you once you get to the playoff, then it becomes like matchup, right? You know, like kind of like 100%. basketball, like who you match up yeah. better with. So, yeah, that's fair. Right. No, no, no. Well, Jacob, good job, man. You survived the boom boom room. You, we're gonna put a little spare key up under the mat for you, brother. Yeah, right. No. No, I appreciate. It. I'll be in there every once in a while. Let him out the boom boom room. <laughs> All right, now, how did Ramon Foster get in the Boom Boom Room? He's in here. Hey, we might have to steal Jacob from y'all. He's good at this radio stuff. I'm like, hey, get out of there, Savage. You're not in here. Is he still in there? Did you let him out? No, nah, nah, he, he know the little back door. He got a little cold to the back door. I usually let him slide through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, Jacob, great stuff, man. Appreciate man, you hopping definitely. on, man. We'll do it again, brother. No doubt. Don't Sounds go great, hiding man. from Sounds us, great. Jacob, dog. We, we, we love to have you on here, dog. Sure. My sure. Man. I appreciate y'all having me, man. Anytime, any chance I get to... Just use my voice, man. Just talk. You know, maybe get in front of a camera or whatever. I love it. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all for the opportunity, man. Yep. Tell well, your pops what up to, dog. You want to talk about great No, You want to talk about great player, James Warren. Yeah. yeah. Great player. Yeah. All right, yeah. uh, more 3HL when we come back. Got a Titan stat for you you're not going to like. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. <laughs>